Hey, what's up guys? So a lot of you have asked about my four channel dash cam setup that I run here in my vehicle that allows me to record not only both in the front and rear, but also to the sides, both left and right. And in this video, I'd like to share some more information about both my current setup that I run here in the vehicle, uh, as well as some of the upcoming changes that I plan on making here to this setup. And I'd also like to talk about the pros and cons of running a four channel dash cam setup like this, which I think should definitely be helpful, especially if maybe you'd like to do something similar. <laughs> Now, as far as the setup that I run here, I run two separate two-channel dash cams. I'm running both the Blackview DR900S two-channel as well as the Blackview DR750S two-channel. And I'm running this because I used to run the DR750S as my main dash cam, and then eventually I upgraded to the DR900S, and I wanted to just, well, throw in more dash cams, and instead of just replacing the DR750, I thought I'd maybe toss it to the rear, uh, and then use both of their dash cams, their normal rear dash cams, and just set them up instead as side-facing dash cams. Now, these side-facing dash cams, this is what's a little bit unique and different here with my setup. I've basically taken their little tiny rear cameras, and I've set them up uh, on the little fixed windows in the rear of my vehicle. And I've chosen those windows specifically because those windows don't go up and down like, well, the regular windows do. That way I have a fixed and permanent place to mount them. And then what's normally the main front dash cams for both setups, I run the DR900S up front for the 4K recording, and then I run my older uh, DR750S on the rear window. And with this setup, it gives me effectively a 360 degree view of the outside of my vehicle. And I like this because instead of just running the traditional setup with front and rear dash cams, which is great for the main areas that you want to record, doing that kind of leaves some blind spots on the side of the vehicles. And that's what the side dash cams, of course, are designed to fill. So uh, let's say I'm parked and something happens on the side of the vehicle. That's where the side facing dash cams come into play. They're not quite as useful when I'm driving just because it's a little weird to watch uh, the road go by sideways, but I guess it could be nice in case maybe somebody T-bones me or something like that. I definitely have the side-facing footage as well instead of just the front and rear ones. Now, where I have those side-facing dash cams mounted in my car, they're way in the back there. Uh, and what I like is the dash cams have a pretty wide field of view, so it's nice in case somebody comes up to the side of the vehicle. Uh, for example, maybe for police encounters and whatnot. Uh, it does work for that, though one of the limitations is if they come really close to your side window on the driver or passenger side, it may not be able to see their face there and what's going on, but otherwise, if they're maybe backed up a little bit or something, or just walking past your car, you'll definitely capture that. And with this setup, I definitely get a lot more than just having the front and rear dash cams alone. Now, if you really want a dash cam that can record, you know, maybe a police officer right there or for police interactions, that kind of stuff, there are other dash cams that I think would be a better fit. Uh, the DR900S here that I have doesn't rotate or anything. It's fixed directly to the windshield. Uh, there are other dash cams like the Blue Sea Sky B2W, which has two rotatable lenses, which are designed to record both in the front and the rear. But you can also rotate those lenses to point out either side if you like. So maybe in case of for example, a police encounter, you can just rotate both of the lenses and record out the side. So that's an option. There's also dash cams that have like a dedicated fixed interior camera with infrared LEDs and whatnot. Those can work too, though they may not necessarily be wide enough to record the sides. They might, depending on where you have it mounted in your car and stuff, but that's another option that can work as well. There's obviously a ton of different ways of going about this, uh, and this is the setup that I've done. Uh, now, having two separate standalone uh, dash cam setups like this uh, also has its pros and cons. For example, both the front and rear dash cams have their own memory card. So if I want to pull out, uh, you know, the front footage or the rear footage, I do have to go out to the different dash cams. Plus for the side facing dash cams, I always have to remember, you know, like if I want the left facing dash cam, is that hooked up to the front dash cam or to the rear? And so I always have to kind of keep note of that. Uh, one little trick I've done is I just take a look at the, uh, uh, the way the cable is pointed out the side of the dash cam. And I have, for example, the uh, left facing dash cam runs out to the front dash cam. And then the right facing dash cam, that cable runs back to the rear dash cam. So that's just a thing that I've kind of got in mind just to help me remember which dash cams plug into what. It would be nice to have maybe just one memory card that records on all four dash cams just for the sake of convenience. That would be a lot uh, to put onto one memory card. There are some setups that do that, but there's not really a lot of good four channel dash cams. I've seen one from Thinkware uh, that they've revealed at CES and uh, SEMA, but I don't know if that's actually going to come uh, to fruition and it's definitely not available yet. Plus that LCD was pretty bulky and stuff and I prefer a more uh, compact setup like this. Another thing that's nice is instead of having one main dash cam that records everywhere, uh, having two separate standalone systems is nice as just an extra layer of reliability. Let's say maybe one of the dash cam fails for whatever reason, the other dash cam is still recording and so maybe you won't get all of the 360 degree video footage, but you're still gonna have some of the footage that you need maybe recording something else. And this was actually pretty helpful. I had an issue with the DR750S uh, not switching into parking mode properly. 
And so I took that dash cam and I mailed it back uh, to Blackview for repairs. And I tried mounting other rear dash cams in place, but they had issues actually sticking to the uh, rear window, for example. And it was unfortunate because I actually got rear-ended and I wasn't running the rear dash cam at the time. It was kind of wild having a four-channel dash cam set up and having no rear-facing dash cam. But the nice thing was I had a separate front-facing dash cam and one of the side-facing dash cams, which could show kind of the shadow of the vehicle kind of hitting me from behind. So it was nice to have a separate setup as just in case something happens maybe to one of the dash cams. So I like kind of having the extra separate systems just in case something like that goes wrong because you never know. Now to power all these different dash cams, I have three different battery packs in the rear of my vehicle. And well, let's actually go take a look at that. These batteries are designed to uh, recharge while I drive and then they provide power to the dash cams when I'm parked. If I want, I can start unplugging stuff and maybe plug it into the wall at home or something. Uh, but in general, I usually don't do that just because it gets kind of tedious. And then back here, I also have my Wi-Fi hotspot that I use to provide an internet connection uh, for the dash cam so they have the cloud capability as well as for my phones, radar detectors, and everything else. Now, I've been pretty happy with this setup here overall. I've got a nice 360 degree view around my vehicle. Uh, I've got 4K recording up front, 1080p otherwise, and I've got a cloud connected setup. So my dash cams I can always access remotely, which is nice to kind of treat them like a security camera in case something happens while I'm parked. Uh, I've got the kind of remote access, which is something that I really like with the Wi-Fi hotspot in the rear. Now that said, let's talk about kind of future updates. For example, there's the new Blackview DR900X that recently came out. I just did a video about that, and it's basically the successor to the DR900S that I've been running up front here. Uh, similar idea, same 4K video quality and 1080p for the rear camera or what will be my side cams, but it also has uh, improved cooling. So if I'm parked on a really hot day, uh, it will be less likely to actually overheat and shut down, which is nice. Plus the uh, wiring has been changed here for the power cable for the parking mode specifically. So it uh, kind of behaves differently as far as how it switches between driving mode and parking mode. Uh, and it's a change that I do like. Unfortunately though, the power cables that I have here for the DR900S and 750S, they're not compatible with the DR900X. I can't pull out my old dash cams and pop the new ones in. Everything works as far as the mounts and the cables for the rear or side cameras, all that kind of stuff. But unfortunately the power cables are not compatible. So for that reason, I'm gonna have to run all new power cables when I want to upgrade. And I was thinking like, okay, well, if I'm running all new power cables anyway, I could run different power cables for any dash cam. Do I want to stick here uh, with the Blackview setup? Now, I was thinking of actually maybe switching over to the Thinkware U1000. I recently installed that in my mom's car. And I was like, well, cool, I can do the same thing. Maybe do two different U1000s, front, rear, left, and right. That would give me even better 4K video quality than the DR900X. Uh, plus, its rear cameras, or what would be my side cams, are going to bump from 1080p up to 2K resolution, or 1440p. So better video quality all the way around. However, the U1000's cloud capabilities just aren't nearly as good as what I've got here with the Blackview. The camera itself is also taller and bulkier, uh, especially if I want to add on the radar module next to it uh, to give me the uh, long-term and buffered parking mode recording capabilities. Additionally, I'm not a huge fan of the idea of my car uh, emitting K-band all the time and being another source of false alerts for people, for other people driving by with radar detectors. Uh, plus, that would be an issue for me because I'm constantly doing videos in here with my radar detectors with the car powered off, so I'm not, you know, burning gas and stuff, and I would have to then go and start unplugging my radar modules and stuff so that my radar detectors in the car don't start falsing. And so I could use the U1000 the same way I use the Blackview and just kind of normal recording with parked recording mode and no radar module. That could be an option. But then again, I wind up losing the cloud capability, which is something that I do like. I kind of figured at first it would be more of a novelty, but now that I've used it for a little while, I've actually grown to like it. And so overall, I think I'm going to stick here uh, with the Blackview DR900X. Now, I was thinking of maybe uh, augmenting it with the uh, VFO A129 Pro and running that as a second dash cam up front as well. And this would specifically be to give me uh, even better 4K video quality up front, plus giving me an additional dash cam, which would actually be pretty helpful. The idea would be that the VFO A129 Pro, just like the Thinkware U1000, is going to have even better video quality here than the Blackview DR900S or DR900X. And personally, I love having really good video quality, the best video quality possible. So that would be a big plus for me. Uh, I also have the uh, wireless Bluetooth button here next to me. And this is pretty nice in case I want to manually record a clip. I can just press the button here on my dash and it'll trigger the dash cam up here on my windshield. No more having to reach over to the dash cam to push the button, which is a nice convenience thing. Now, when it comes time to share any of that video footage here to YouTube, I can then just pop out the memory card from the A129 Pro, uh, pop into my computer, download it, and it's good to go with even better video quality than what I would get with the DR900X. 
as a nice bonus, uh, when I have the memory card back at home, my black views will continue to record for me. Uh, plus, in case maybe I forget to bring that memory card back into the car, which has definitely happened more than once, I don't have to then go run back to my uh, run back home to grab that card to pop back into the dash cam. And speaking of which, I need to grab a few more spares and put them in my glove box again. VFO does do uh, parking mode and buffered parking mode like the black view, but I don't like the event notifications quite as much. And then of course it doesn't have any of the cloud capabilities at all, uh, which is I guess why I wouldn't want to altogether replace my black views. So basically when it comes time to rerun the cables for the DR900X, I'm thinking of uh, running an additional cable for the VFO A129 Pro. This way I've got my high quality 4K recording up front. Uh, I've got my 360 degree video quality with the black views, which has 4K front and rear and then 1080p left and right. And those black views will be always recording both when I'm driving and I'm parked and I get the cloud functionality. Again, with the VFO running up front, just to give me the very best video quality possible, which is what I would normally share on YouTube. That would give me a total of then five dash cams, which honestly is probably overkill, but Oh well, the stuff is fun and I like doing it. So yeah, that would make five dash cams. I could of course start adding more to do interior facing dash cams, but I don't necessarily like to do that. I prefer having the uh, the exterior facing dash cams. And so yeah, that's how I run it here in my vehicle with a four channel dash cam set up to record all 360 degrees. Now all the stuff that I've talked about here in this video, I'll put links to all the different dash cams and cables and batteries and all that kind of stuff that I use. Uh, I'll link to all of that down in the video description. And I'm also curious for you guys, if any of you are running something similar, uh, let me know what kind of setup you're using as far as multiple exterior dash cams. Do you run interior facing dash cams? Uh, and then pros and cons. Let me know what you use, what you like and what you don't like about it. I'm definitely curious. I'm always experimenting here myself, you know? And finally, speaking of, you know, experimenting and testing, I just recently updated my uh, buyer's guide on my website that goes over the very best dash cams on the market. So if you're looking for a different dash cam, maybe something fancier like what I do, or just something more simple and basic, either way, definitely check that out. I'll link to that down in the video description as well. So you can check that out too. And so, yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions and I will see you in the next one.